From Mason's edition, over the hill, Grand Sound, Bain Town, from everywhere, they're coming, they're the people's choice, the Saxon superstars.
We know you're watching. We can feel you. We know that you are afraid. Afraid of us. You're afraid of change. You're afraid of what happens when the Bahamian people find out that you've lied to them. I'm going to hang up this phone and we are going to tell them everything. We are going to tell them who they are and what you took from them. Change is not coming. Change is here. Fellow Bahamians, you have been lied to. You have been told that you are poor. That you have no wealth and no resources. You have been told that your natural resources are worth nothing. You've been told that even if you had natural resources that only the wealthy could afford to mine and process it. While you were struggling to survive they were secretly shipping billions of tons of your natural resources out of the country. It's time to learn the truth. It's time to end this myth. There is a dangerous cohort called the oligarchs. They have been using your beloved politicians as puppets to do their bidding. To distract you with rallies, handouts and jobs while they ran off with your riches. So the question is, how do you get your resources out of the hands of the oligarchs and into the hands of the Bahamian people? It's easier than you think. Today, I have come as the bearer of good news. And that is that change is not coming, change is here. Good afternoon, Bahamas, and welcome. Welcome to COI Live on COI TV. I am Charlotte Green, Chairman of the Coalition of Independence. Today is Sunday, August 14, 2022. We are broadcasting live around the world on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Daily Motion at coalitionofindependence.com, and the COI app. We are also broadcasting in Europe on Tele2 in Russia on VKTV and in Asia on Huya and Duyu. As you join in, please remember to share the links. I would like to extend a warm and happy birthday to those who have celebrated their birthday this past week. Um, few names dropped by my desk um, today. Miss Patricia Butler, 
Miss Melissa Cornish, and Lulu Etienne. I hope you guys had a wonderful birthday week. Blessings to you all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are prepared for some very informative educational information today. As you all know, as Bahamians, we are the inheritors, or should I say executive of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. It's time that we pay extreme attention to our country's natural resources, our country's national and international affairs. We all have a managerial responsibility to ensure that our leaders govern in the best interest of our nation through our laws and our constitution. We all play a very vital role in the governance of our country. Ladies and gentlemen, before we bring Mr. Bean on, I would like to speak briefly in reference to the Public Account Committee, also known as the PAC. Now, recently I heard a nice note circulating through WhatsApp defending the inadequacy of the, should I say, the New Day government. I would like for you, before we start, to listen to this voice note. Producer? Good afternoon to all. I listen to all of these recent voice notes that these people complaining about the present administration led by the Honorable Dr. Philip Brave Davis. And it's almost as if it's though they are complacent to the fact that this government is not even a year old. History um, lends to our intelligence. The last administration, which was led by Dr. Hubert Minnis, who devastated, broke, frustrated, dilapidated, and totally depleted and defeated the human way of life. And now we're in a disposition where all we're doing is complaining. All we're doing is attacking. All we're doing is voicing negativity. It's almost as if it's so we can see everything that is going wrong with the failure to acknowledge anything that is being done right. And that is such a tragedy. That is such a dark demonic disposition to be in. Unless we forget, if we was to look back in prospectively, reflectively, just a couple of months ago, not even a year ago, we was under the leadership of Dr. Hubert Alexander Minnis, whose tyrant style of leadership held us hostage. Don't, don't forget the police force, you know. Don't forget the police force because they submitted themselves humbly and willingly and openly to the leadership of this demon. And he used the police force to run this country as a police state. Almost as if it's though that the people was against the police. Don't forget the activity. Don't forget the horrid leadership on the police force by Commissioner Paul Roll. All of that has changed. Don't forget the roadblocks, the harassment of decent, hardworking, honest, and, um, integrity lending citizens, upstanding citizens being harassed at roadblocks. Don't forget that all over something that is almost um, simultaneously connected to the flu. That's all COVID is, is an advanced extension of the flu. And look how the police force treated us. Don't forget them. Okay, that's why these young men don't have no respect for them. Because anything the politicians tell them do, they seem not to have a voice. I understand that government dictates what happened and that leadership is subjected to leadership. But at the same time, you have a voice. You have the ability to influence situations and circumstance. They stood up and they said nothing. And now we're complaining. We are the greatest point to impact a generation and to leave a significant legacy. We are the greatest point for transformation, restoration, and elevation in this place. We are the greatest point for a turnaround and it is happening. But yet you mumble, yet you complain, yet you launch a tap. And here's the thing, when Dr. Minnis was at the blight of his rulership, of his leadership, you were silent. You said absolutely nothing. You know why? Because you know Minnis was coming to get you. You know Minnis was nasty, mindless, stink, arrogant, and full of himself. But now God give you somebody humble. God give you somebody passive. God give you somebody with compassion, with understanding. God give you somebody with integrity. You want to take advantage of them. Look at the ungratefulness of the behavior people. Look at how disgusting some of you is. Like Dr. Minnis said, he didn't cause Dorian. But the problem is, it's the way he responded to Dorian. This government has already begun to respond to some of the immediate needs that we face as a country. And you are still ungrateful. Man, God bless the Bahamas. Hey, bro. This is the response, by the way. And I feel like this response represents the voice of um, a lot of Bahamians and how they feel the New Day government is operating. Hey, bro, listen. The Bahamian people don't want to hear nothing about no 10 months, don't want to hear nothing about no year. The PLP been run for 100 years, Brad Davis been in politics all his life. So what you're telling, telling the Bahamian people that they don't know what the concerns was of the people before they get in power, that's what you're telling us? We don't hear nothing about no 10 months. The people voted their FNM out 
um, um, in, 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 uh, in um, whatever that election was in the last time because they wanted uh, relief, okay? They wanted relief, and they want relief right away. They know the blueprint before they get in office and the cry of the people. So don't come making no excuses on this voice note about no PLP, and I don't want to hear it. They know the cry of the people. They know the suffering of the people before they get in power, okay? So if I'm a government, and I know the people were suffering under the FNM, and they've been suffering for years, when they get in power, I got to wake on them from day one. So don't come on this chat talking stupidness about no, uh, uh, only been 10 months and talk about what the FNM do. Okay, we know what the FNM do. That's make it more, uh, that should make it more obvious that what they're supposed to do when they get in from day one. Okay, because y'all will come on here talking about 10 months, and then two years, y'all be talking about it's only been two years, you all look like y'all are only, uh, um, um, uh, 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 when it's four years, y'all will be saying, oh, it's only been four years, and that time next, uh, the next year's election. Okay? You've been in politics all your life. You know what's the ills of this country? For the poor people. Deal with it from day one. No more excuse. We ain't taking no more excuses. Get it done, or get out. Ladies and gentlemen, what you just heard was a Bahamian in all of his frustration, and he represents the voice of many. I am sure many Bahamians feel the same way. And you have here on one hand, the FNM, here on one hand, the PLP. Both of these political parties, regardless of who is governing our country, both of these political parties sit in the House of Assembly, whether you are in the governing seat or whether you are in the opposition seat. And this brings us to the discussion today the Public Accounts Committee. What is the Public Accounts Committee? What is their responsibility? Right now, the leader, any leader who is of the opposition always sits as the chair of the PAC, the Public Accounts Committee. And the job of the Public Accounts Committee is to hold the sitting government accountable for the finances of our country, for any, um, any businesses done, the PAC is responsible to investigate and to hold our government accountable. Okay, so when persons, when persons, um, when persons make the argument and they say that, oh, the PLP was in power, we were not in power, we did not know what was going on, or we couldn't do this because this was the decision or choices they make. The PAC is responsible to assure, to oppose that things are done the right way and accordingly. The missing funds for Hurricane Dorian, it was also the responsibility of the PAC to, to, to investigate where this money went. They were supposed to hold the government accountable regardless of what roadblocks they might have a counter encounter. Their job is to oppose on behalf of the Bohemian people. Isn't this why they are, um, isn't this what they are being paid for? They are just as much in the governing seat as the um, government who was voted in to run our country. So they all right now should be held accountable. It's, a, it's, it's evident that someone dropped the ball and it was dropped on all, on all, all of their hands, it was dropped. Okay, so we need to stop pointing fingers, the PLP um, pointing fingers at the FNM, the FNM pointing fingers at the PLP. You both sat on the, on the board of the um, Public's Account Committee. Neither of you held each other accountable, neither of you. The leader of the, of the um, political party, the leader of the political party always sits as the chairman for the public's account committee. And it is their job to hold the governing party responsible. Okay, it's their job. All right, so at the end of the day, they cannot continue pointing fingers at each other. The public's account committee is responsible for overseeing the government expenditures. Okay, if they're not doing it, then who is? They are responsible for ensuring honesty within our government. And there's also an act in place to ensure that the committee is aware of its duties. Okay, the PAC is the loyal opposition. Their job is to oppose the sitting government. 
They're supposed to be doing that now. I'm not even sure that Michael Pintard is doing that right now. I understand he's on the street advocating, but he holds more power in office than he does on the street. He has the ability right now to enforce, um, put policies on the table to um, deal with the situation he's trying to deal with out on the street. You have more power in-house than you have on the street. These political parties have the Bahamian people where they want them, divided and weak. And this is something that we have to get over Bahamians. Always remember this, Brave Davis was in parliament for 35 years from 1987 to date, okay? Producer, can you please play the, the video, ready to govern on the first day? And that is the first step towards a better day. A candid response from Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Davis to the news that the general election will be held in just a few weeks. He slammed the announcement which came by way of a national address from the Prime Minister as nothing more than a political statement. It was not a national address. It was a, it was a political uh, address where he was asking the Bahamian people to look at him and, 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 and believe that he would be a better person to manage the post-pandemic I say no. He's demonstrated that he could not manage the pandemic um, uh, properly. And you've got to trust him to manage it during and after. The bell was rung during during an alarming surge in COVID-19 cases and deaths. So far in August alone, the country recorded more than 1,700 cases. Additionally, hospitals are bursting at the seams and public health care facilities on New Providence and Grand Bahama are experiencing day the aid of a sick out. Davis says this leaves one question for the general public heading to the polls. This call at a time when no doubt the electorate may be asking themselves whether We are more concerned about politics than lives. Davis, who is also the MP for Cat Island, Ramki San Salvador, or said the pandemic will no doubt affect the way political parties campaign. While he admitted it is a concern he said the party has protocols in place we have internally um, set up set set up um, COVID protocols and rules for, for our candidates and campaign canvases And which they are following, and we are adhering to what I call the generally accepted protocols. Following the dissolution of Parliament, P PLP Chairman Fred Mitchell weighed in, affirming the PLP's readiness to govern. Our Progressive Liberal Party is ready, and we will be ready to govern on day one. We have the vision, the policies, and the plans to take this country forward. We have the candidates who can deliver the change that people are crying for, and we have the leadership to guide this country into a new day. Ladies and gentlemen,
we were all told that they were ready to govern on day one. But instead, three months later, six months later, eight months later, all we have been hearing was, well, they just came and give them a chance. When in fact, we have had um, ministers or a minister who is now the leader who, have, who has actually been in governance for 35 years. Um, this is my personal view, my personal view. You have leadership, even if you're not sitting in the position as a leader of the country, you have had the opportunity to sit in parliament for 35 years, 35 years. Life is a classroom. Experience is teacher, is our teacher. You would have think that the minute the New Day government had um, came into power, certain cries that the Bahamian people were echoing for years would have already been implemented. Okay, our Freedom of Information Act, from what I have seen, is actually enacted, but it's not being enforced. It's like the wants and the needs of the Bahamian people is being disregarded daily with no respect. Our constitution is being trampled on with no regards for the Bahamian people, no regards at all. So at the end of the day, we the Bahamian people would want the government to know this. You are not elected, nor are you being paid to give us excuses as to why certain things cannot be done, okay? This is beyond the point of acceptable, unacceptable. Our country need answers. To the country's leader, Mr. Brave Davis, you are by far the oldest sitting member in parliament and you have sat through parliament for 35 years. 35 years, eight months is not acceptable to say we can't get this done. From 1987 to date, you have been sitting in parliament. You stated that your administration was ready to govern on day one. And with nine months in, the general public does not see a reflection of your 35 years plus of experience being manifested. Lincoln, can you please pull up the act for the PAC, please? Ladies and gentlemen, I would like for you to take a look at the Public Account Committee Act. This is what they use to govern their committee. For most of you who don't know what this is, because a lot of us tend to go back and forth with argument with each other, stating that, well, the FNM was in the governing seat. The PLP did not do this and they did not do that because the governor, the governing party was the FNM at the time. Let me assure you that even though the FN, the PLP at the time was not sitting in the governing seat, their position was just as powerful as the governing party. The committee, the PAC, they have the authority, the authority to hold the current government accountable. That is their job. So the Public Accounts Committee, the Public Accounts Committee of the House of Assembly shall, shall, that means this is something that they shall do, must do, okay? The Public Accounts Committee shall review the annual audited financial statement of the government and the annual report of non-financial performances. B, review the annual, annual reports, including the non-financial performances achieved and audited financial statements for each public entity and government businesses enterprise. And C, report, report to the House of Assembly on the results of the reviews no later than the first week of the eighth month of the financial year. Following the financial year, following the financial year, 
you know, you move a little too fast. Okay, number two is the chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee shall ensure shall ensure that the Public Accounts Committee meet as often as necessary to perform the functions required by this act. The House of Assembly shall consider the report of the Public Accounts Committee on the reviews set out in subsection one. The opposition has a very big job to play a very, very, very big role to play in governance. A very big role. They are not without responsibility. It is not their job to go into a, to, to the House of Assembly and not be able to hold the governing party accountable. It says so here in the act. So all of those missing, misappropriate funds that was donated for the hurricane victims in Grand Bahama and Abaco, Menace is not the only one who should be held accountable. The opposition also played a role in that. The opposition also is responsible. This all goes to show they were not doing their jobs either and they were just waiting to get in. They were just waiting to get in. While our people were suffering, they had the opportunity as well as to stand up and demand accountability from a strong especially when it came step. from a point of, of people suffering. Joining us live, joining us now is the leader of the Coalition of Independence, Lincoln Bain. He will further go into details concerning the PAC. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is always an amazing pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for joining us on uh, this year's Sunday, it is August uh, 14th, and um, it's a pleasure to have all of you with us. We're going to enjoy this one. We have, we have uh, some serious conversations to have. I want to thank our amazing, illustrious, and intelligent, and beautiful chairman uh, for the great job that she did uh, 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 bringing us uh, thus far. Maria Daxon was supposed to be here with us, but uh, she is under the weather right now, and she's unable to make it. Um, as you know, Maria Daxon is plagued from asthma which she acquired as an adult from working in a government building and being exposed to, to mold. But she is always out there fighting for the people with her, with her very last breath. So I just want to thank her for that. And as we said earlier, we are broadcasting live all over the world right now. And you can broadcast. It doesn't seem like we've had any interference other than with some numbers uh, and with some, uh, some of your, your chats aren't showing up, but they're showing up on our screen. Uh, right here uh, uh, to my to my uh, uh, right. Well, yeah, to my right. And so we are broadcasting live on YouTube, on the Coalition of Independence page, on the, the, the Bahamian Evolution page, on the Lincoln Bain page. We're broadcasting on Facebook, on Lincoln Bain, on Coalition of Independence and Bahamian Evolution. We're also broadcasting on my Twitter page and we're broadcasting around the world on Tele3 in Europe. Sorry, Tele2 in Europe. <laughs> Sorry about that, Tele2. We're broadcasting on Tele2 in Europe, on VK uh, in Asia, and on, on Do You and on Hoyoy in Asia. All right? So thank you all for being here. Ms. Green brought up a very important topic. <laughs> we got a couple of things to talk about today, but she started talking about the Public Accounts Committee. And um, we are tired of hearing excuses from the government. Uh, when they become government about what the other, the previous government did and what they knew and didn't know. It is actually the law. It is the law, as was stated, for uh, the, the opposition which controls the PAC. It is the law for them to do the things that Ms. Green said, to review the annual audited financial statements of the government. It says they shall, not they may or they should, they shall. That is the law. And if they don't do that, they're breaking the law. It is the opposition's job. Don't come in and say you surprised. If you surprised, it's because you wasn't doing your job and you need to give us every single dollar back that we paid you over those five years because you were being paid for nothing to break the law. You are criminals. So if the PLP now complains about what the FNM was doing, it's because the PLP was acting as criminals and breaking the law in this country and not doing their job while collecting the people's money. The Public Accounts Committee shall review the annual audited financial statements of the government and the annual report on non-financial performance. 
They shall review the annual reports, including the non-financial performance, achieve an audited financial statements of, the, of each public entity and government business enterprises. All of them, Alive, BTC, um, Water and Sewage, BEC, every single thing that the government has, that opposition's job is to review the annual reports and to investigate them. And they're to report it to the Bahamian people through the House of Assembly, and the House of Assembly must debate on them. But you never see them bringing this to the House of Assembly. Never once have you seen it. It's because all of them are acting in concert together as criminals just waiting their turn. I heard someone say, you know, something about, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, something very, that was actually funny to me about, about uh, uh, Brave Davis in the last election. I want you to look at this picture. All right. I want you to look at this picture. And I want to see the first person who can tell me what this is. Someone tell me what that is. What is that? Do you know this picture? Someone tell me what that is. The first person. Tell me what that is. What, what's going on here? What's happening right there? Someone tell me. All right, what's happening in that picture right there? Someone tell me what's happening in that picture. Let me look at, at your comments. Come on. I'm sure someone can tell me what's happening in this picture right here. Look at it good. What's happening right there? All right, look good. Look good at the crowd. There's something happening right there. Something's happening right there. Anyone can see it? Let me see what someone said. Someone behemoth going to work. Um, oh, I missed that one. Say in front of a market. Look at look at it good. Look at it good, good, good. Look at it good. Y'all see this? Y'all see this? Food star rush. Food star rush. Food star rush. Who that is? Lana Russell. Lana Russell. Oh yeah, good. On the food line. Someone's on the food line. Smart behemoths. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that picture right there was when Hubert Alexander Minnis shut down this country with almost no notice. He shut down this country with almost no notice. And people rushed to the food stores. Whereas you should have been afraid of COVID at the time, where we was having an outbreak, look at what was happening. Now people were in their masks, but they cluttered together because it's a desperate situation. That was when that evil, despotic dictator shut this country down. Do you want to know what the opposition at the time, Philip Brave Davis' response was? Many of you don't remember. He said, just do what Minister says. Do you That's remember? Right. He said, just comply with whatever Dr. Minnis says. That is what Brave Davis did to us. He should have been the opposition. And we were paying him to oppose the government. That is his duty that he was being paid for, given a car, a cell phone, bodyguards and helpers aids, and a salary. It was his job and the job of the opposition to oppose that. But you know what to oppose it? Regular civilians like Miss Charlotte Green and those who got arrested on Windsor Park when he locked us down with no notice. Regular citizens got arrested and jailed, many of them. And Minister had to open back up. Brave Davis, through all of that, never once opposed the government. Never once. And everything he said, just comply with what Minnis says. That's it. It's terrible and that's disturbing. It is the job of the opposition to oppose, not sit and wait your turn to do the exact same things that your predecessor was doing. It's criminal. And so I hope that we never do that again. So all of these excuses about what the FNM did and the FNM this, I don't want to hear about the FNM. You know, Ms. Green, this reminds me of, 
of you know for our sports fanatics out there you know the la lakers was a was an amazing franchise but they started to be losing and they were losing badly and they had kurt rambus who was a very experienced back basketball player um and now he was a coach and they had him as a coach and, and they were losing and they said you know what we need to go get someone who can help us to win we need a coach that can help us to win and they went and they got Phil Jackson, who was a six-time NBA uh, champion as a coach. And they said, listen, and, and, and Phil Jackson said, listen, I'm going to come on board. Let me bring my team, and I'm going to bring you a championship. That next year, while they were playing, Phil Jackson didn't make any excuses about what the previous coach did and how the previous coach didn't uh, work these fellas right, didn't train them right. He made no excuses. He promised them the triangle offense and that he would bring a championship, and that is exactly what he did. Three, yeah. back to back. Because he promised that. Never once do you hear a new coach making an excuse about what the previous coach did. We are not interested in the FNM. That is why we voted them out. No Bahamian wants to hear your excuses as it relates to the FNM. When it comes to bringing them to justice and sending them to jail, yes. But we don't want no excuses about what the FNM failed to do or what you're doing that the FNM didn't do. Listen, do your job. So, uh -huh. go ahead. Sorry, Lincoln. So, on the terms of leadership, and that's what leadership is about. Leadership is not about throwing um, someone under the bus. Leadership is actually not about finding excuses. Leadership is about results, producing results. Okay? For every issue every problem there is a solution and i will use this as an example okay one of my um team members did not do something according to one of our supporters one of our supporters called me and they were um very disgruntled about a situation i then reached out to my team um one of my teammates and you know what she said she said you know what tell them it was my fault and i apologize she said to tell them it was her fault, sorry, her fault, and that she apologized. I told her I am not going to tell him that because you work under me. I am your leader. I will take full responsibility for that, and I will apologize. Okay, we are not about giving excuses. We are about solutions. So as leaders, our job, it's the point of the obvious, but at the same time, find solutions. And like I say, our people are, are, are more than just. We are executors of this country. And I feel like our people deserve to be treated as such, inheritors, owners. And the reason why they disrespect us, Lincoln, is because they see us for what they have um, laid out for us. We are just laborers. We don't deserve to know the business of this country. So we need to start changing our mindset and we need to start walking as the executives of this country. We need to start walking as leaders of this country because we all are leaders and we all contribute to the construct of this country. So therefore, as Bahamian citizens, we also deserve the respect and we are demanding it starting, starting from yesterday. Thank you. And we want to we want to change gears now. And I want to show you something else. It's, it's under a similar vein, but this is very interesting. I'm going to show you another picture and we're going to see if you know what's happening here. Someone tell me what's happening here. It says it's right there. <laughs> what's happening here? What's happening right there? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> this is government putting Internet in uh, the park. One by one, they're putting internet in the parks around uh, the Bahamas. And um, I spent some time in the U.S., you know, recently. And, and listen, I was looking at this. And a young person looked at this. And they were like, uh, what are they doing? I was like, they're putting internet in the park. I know that. But they were commenting on this picture. And asking, what are they doing? I'm like, well, they're launching internet in a park in Angleston. That's the neighborhood where I was born. And uh, they were like, yeah, but why are they celebrating that? They're, they're celebrating putting internet 
in a park? Like, <laughs> they're actually having a ceremony because they put internet in a park? And hearing it caused me to realize, you know, how low our expectations is. And I said, well, yeah. that is what I call low expectation. And they responded to me, no, that is what I call dumb. And this is from someone young, right, Lincoln? Yes, it's from a, a, a young person, a very young person. Okay. Yeah, a, a teenager. And they looked at, at they looked at these pictures that I was looking at. And they were like, are they seriously having a celebration? Hmm. And then they asked me a critical question. A critical question that all of you should ask yourselves. They're putting internet in the parks, right? They're putting internet in the parks. Do they have internet in the schools? The answer is no. You put in internet in the parks and you don't have internet in the school, every single school in America has internet. It's a very simple process to get it. You don't have internet in the schools, but you have inter you're putting internet in the parks where people don't even feel safe to go. Well, I'll tell you what this is. This is this is a very uh, this is a very uh, sh shallow attempt again to take the ideas of the Coalition of Independence, the plans of the Coalition of Independence, and dilute them. They're trying to take all of the ideas that we have put forward, but make it in such a way that you don't really benefit, that you don't you don't really get it. Like they're just giving you some crumb, they let you taste it, but they're not just gonna let you have it. And that's what they're doing. Listen, internet is in parks all over America, for example. Uh, they're in they're in the not just the regular playground parks, they're in the national parks, like Yellowstone, <laughs> in the bush. <laughs> they got parks with grizzly bears. <laughs> they got they got park, they got internet in these parks. Why we're treating this like this is something so revolutionary, it actually, it actually is mind-blowing to me. And this is because you have people born after 1973 running this country. People who were not born in this country are actually running this country. Think about that. They were born in another country. They were born in Britain. And they're running this country, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And so what they do now is they celebrate this thing. They have a big celebration and they have a podium. They literally have a podium and people sitting around. And then what they do is they grab a device and make it look like they just invented the internet. Look at them. They're like, look, look, there's internet on this. It's embarrassing. They're asking, they're acting like this is something so, so groundbreaking. Like anyone can take a, a MiFi device and go in the park and give internet to anyone they want to. Look at them. And then they grab some people and, hey, all of you, let's take a picture, make it look like we've never seen the internet before. Everyone smile and point. You point. And let's make it look like we've never seen internet on our devices. Our expectations have gone so low in this country that it is disgraceful. We need to get to the point where we move to the new Bahamas or we're going to be in trouble. The idea that the, the, the COI put forward as it relates to internet was not internet in the parks. It was internet in your homes, every single home. It's doable. We showed you the numbers and how it was going to be done. We showed you the cost. We broke down their cost and showed you that this could be done now without our natural resources. They can do this right now. We showed you exactly that a dollar, how much it's going to cost and how we could do it and why we would do it. All right? And... We showed you that you would be getting free data on your phone. And we added that you would be getting free cell service. All Bahamians. So the foreigners would still pay. The tourists would still pay. But Bahamians, this is a payback. This is an incentive for the government using your natural resources to sell to foreigners or allowing foreigners to come in and use your natural resources is a way to give back to you. So it's not free everything, it's not socialism, it's payback for what using what you own. And so we showed you how 
there's a ridge, there's a high, uh, there's a high level ridge going across the entire New Providence, for example, and you would put antennas. We told you how many antennas that we would put up across this entire ridge, and uh, and we would use those antennas to to deliver internet. Wi-Fi to both sides of those ridge. Through the Wi-Fi, you'd be able to use cell phones, um, uh, cell phone service free, internet service free, um, high level internet service free, and there's no reason you can't do that as a payback for all that you and yours have sacrificed. Doesn't that sound much better, Ms. Green? Lincoln, that sounds like a plan. That sounds like vision to me, vision that needs to be implemented right away right away and lincoln you know what's so amazing our sovereign wealth fund our natural resources i always call our natural resources the nation's currency okay it is what we can use right now to um to propel our country so far right now in the 21st century all right and persons are saying that you guys are looking for handout you guys are looking for handout. what's the point of having raw material natural resources if the bahamian people are not able to benefit foreigners are withdrawing from our resource bank everyone else is 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 benefiting from our natural resources except the bahamian people in other countries like dubai dubai sorry qatar um um norway they are benefiting from their natural resources whether it's in yeah. education health um, some may be receiving um, direct funding into their account, but at the end of the day, the main thing is that they are benefiting. Bahamians are not benefiting, period. And we have to demand more. No, we are not complaining. No, we are not begging. We are just demanding what rightfully belongs to our people. That's yes. it. And if something isn't right, yes, we have to talk about it. We have to agitate on it. That is not Bahamians complaining. That is not being complaining. Okay? So we have to do something. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And if we don't do something, we're going to find that we're going to be a people without a nation. And that concerns me more than anything else that we have faced in recent times. That concerns me gravely, gravely. And so we're going to call on all Bahamians to stand with us because a clarion call is about to be made. And that, take us, that takes us to the rest of what we want to talk about today, to more of what we want to talk about today. A clarion call is going to have to be made. Our... Attorney General, the Attorney General of this Bahamas, our chief servant whose job is to, to defend the law, is now going to break the law. The, the, the PLP seems to be famous for this. They're going to break the law, the Constitution, in order to do what they want to do. We remember this happening with the gaming bill. Um, they changed the law in a sneaky way so that they wouldn't have to break it. They actually put a new law in place to say that they could have, they could have, and no one challenged it because it could have been challenged legally. They could have a referendum that's not binding, which actually goes against the constitution. They should have had a referendum in order to do that because they were editing the constitution. They were adding a new law which took away the power of the Constitution. The Constitution intended that if you were going to make a change to the Constitution, which included, they included the need to have a referendum, if you're going to make a change to the Constitution, you have to have a referendum. So what the PLP did was they said, okay, let's just pass a law that says we could have, what we could call our opinion poll, but it's going to be called an, an other than a referendum. That's, that's what they called it. And they put it into law. And it was shocking for, for a lot of people in the legal world. But it seems like a lot of people in our legal world don't have the courage that they need 
to be officers of the court, defenders of the law. They will sit back and allow a government to do anything because they don't want to get on their wrong side. They will allow whatever the government is doing, they can just do, no questions asked. And so they created this fake law, all right, and broke the Constitution. Now they want to do it again. Before I get to that, we're going to talk about that in a minute and see how you feel about that because it's time to stand up. When you're going to change the law to allow uh, for anyone you say to become a citizen, that's when we have a problem because it's a sham. But in the meantime, there's something I wanted you to see. Something interesting I wanted you to see. And uh, I wanted you to see this. Let's see if I could pull this up for you. I wanted you to see this because there's some people who are trying to spin a narrative. They're trying to spill, spin a, a demonic narrative in this country so that our country can be overthrown. While the government is working mm -hmm. for them on the inside, we have other people on the inside trying to destroy us from the inside while we're being attacked from the outside. And anyone who stands up against this, they are calling xenophobic. Mm -hmm. When the real xenophobia is actually happening against the Bahamian people. Those are the persons who are experiencing xenophobia in this nation. I want you to see something because I want you to see, um, I want you to see the spin that these people are putting uh, on this because you got to open your eyes or your country is going to be gone. I'm going to go to the already saved all of these images, but I want you to see this live. I'm going to open this for you. Let me, let me share my screen for a sec. Let me share the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to the I'm going to the Facebook page of Luby Georges because Luby Georges has made himself an enemy of this state. He is someone who is hell bent on taking over the Bahamas and, and allowing criminality and corruption to take over this Bahamas, in my opinion. What he posted here, he posted to show you that. Not all of Haiti was experiencing the terror and destruction that you see. So that, and he said that you shouldn't be worried about an influx from Haitian people. He said, he said, sharing to say that Port-au-Prince, while the capital is not the only place in Haiti, uh, what happens there does not reflect the entire country. The the gang violence and insecurity issues while very serious, are not happening everywhere in the country, and there should be no fear of the mass exodus. That's what he's saying. But what I want you to see, this is what I want you to see. While y'all are sitting around thinking that all Haitians are poor, I keep telling y'all that there are 800,000 millionaires in Haiti. Dr. Nui, who is the Bahamian ambassador, used to always say this. There's 800,000 millionaires there. And they live in a separate world. Just like while we were locked down, Albany was just going and going like there was no pandemic going on. There was a different world for them and life at key and everywhere else. While there was different rules for our best than there was for the rest of the country. In Haiti, there are people who are behind gates who don't experience the same thing that the rest of Haiti is experiencing. And so... While y'all are sitting down thinking that all Asians are poor, this is them partying in Haiti. So while, on, while outside, some bad stuff happening right here. And these writers in North Haiti. Look at the partying going on. Huh? Why don't these people, <laughs> why don't these people help the poor Haitians. Look at them. 
They have an all white party. It's called dinner in white is what they call it. These are the type of people that I saw every day that I was around every day while I was in Haiti. And that's why I have a different outlook on Haiti than many Bahamians have. They only show you the poor parts of it. But these people, look at them. They look poor to you. And look at this, this, this shirt this, this fella have on. Some of these clothes you're about to see, you can't find in Nassau. These people partying. Look how much people there. There's an all-white party. And all them fine, all-white, and all them iron crisp. You see no poor clothes? You see no rags they wearing? Yeah. Big party going on. So while they are uh, uh, playing the, the sympathy card, in order to make us responsible for what's happening, I'm sorry, that I have to catch up. Look, this is a video that posted. Show me one poor person. How much you are going to afford to throw a party like that right now? While they're giving you the impression that we need to let these people in because all of them are poor and they need help and that's our neighbors and our brothers and sisters, why don't their literal brothers and sisters who are wealthy, who are doing well, they are billionaires in Haiti, why aren't they doing it? They're not my brother and sister, they're my cousins. But the people in this video, that's their brother and sister. Look at them. I'm happy for them. I'm happy whenever I see, you know, black people doing well. I, I, I know these people in Haiti. Look, they're part here. I'm thinking what's so disturbing about that is that they are going globally, right? They're going globally and they're painting this um, this card of, of sympathy and making our country look like a country of um, a country of a people of hate towards them. When we are simply trying to preserve our way, our way of life. Basically, you could say they have two countries. Everywhere they go, they have two countries. Hmm. So there's a lot, there's a lot of wealth in Haiti. I want you to understand that. These same people won't let their mother set in the door. And there are some people who come on that boat. There's some people who come on that boat who are not as poor as you think. Don't mind how you see them. There's some people who come on that boat who have degrees, who are pharmacists, who are nurses, who are doctors on that boat. That's just the way for them to get here. There's some people that's just a ride. But all of them are not poor. I want you to understand that, that Haiti received $13.5 billion. Billion. That's our national budget for about six years. For the whole entire country national budget. For about six years. They received $35 billion immediately after uh, Hurricane Maria. And all that... Is, where is it? Where is it? That is the question we need to ask ourselves.
And so uh, uh, they are not like you think. They are not like it's being portrayed. And we as a people need to wake up. And we need to take responsibility for our nation. We can't let these people come here. This is a scam. This is uh, Haiti sends people to other countries and they make their money. The majority of their GDP is from money coming, sucking from other countries. And so, yes, we need to help our brothers and sisters. But my thing is we are Bahamians who need help right now. We are Bahamians who need help. We are Bahamians who can't get a hospital bed. I watched a video they showed me the other day. I watched a video they showed me the other day. And I was going to play the video, but I didn't want to play that. Where they were showing a Haitian police officer who said he grew up in the Shanty Town. And he grew up to be a corporal on the police force. And they were telling this story as if it was a rags to riches story. Where he grew up in a Shanty Town which many of us who grew up in Bain Town, um, Camp Road, etc., <coughs> we grew up in similar conditions. And they were telling this story, and he was telling the story to tell other children of, of illegal immigrants in the Shiny Town that you could grow up to be whatever you want to be in our country. And I'll be honest with you, when I heard that story, um, I was glad for him as a human being, but then I thought there is a Bahamian child who wanted that place that he got in the police force that couldn't get it because his parents came here illegally, breaking the law, had a child here, and that child replaced some Bahamian child. Now that Bahamian child who got replaced might have not been able to find a job somewhere else because their seat was taken. And that child might have gone into a life of crime or who knows what, but that's one child. If he was born to his Haitian parents in Haiti, he could have had the same story. He could have gone into the police force, the Haitian police force always hiring. He could have gone to the Haitian police force and be a corporal there. Same difference, but in your country. I want us to change our thinking. These people are trying to manipulate us. When I say these people, I'm talking about pe evil people like Luby Georges, etc. There are some good, honest, hardworking, decent Haitians that will want in this country to help us build up our country if they come here legally. But we are concerned with those bad ones who are terrorizing Port-au-Prince, terrorizing it. And so Luby was having some sort of debate with me over whether Philip Grave Davis actually signed, actually signed um, onto this uh, agreement. Whether he actually signed because he pulled up a, uh, uh, a press statement that showed, and the press statement showed uh, uh, how uh, uh, countries they say that signed on to this agreement. So he just grabbed that and he posted that because Luby is busy trying to spin right now to make sure that his people have whatever advantage they want and that you don't get to the point where you don't want them coming here because he makes money from them being here and them coming here apparently. And he's looking out for them. And so he posted this. It has a list of countries in this. Now, it doesn't say that they signed on, but these are countries they're saying making, that made this declaration. It's interesting. And so, if you look at this carefully, I'll read it. So we, the heads of states of and government of the Argentine Republic, Barbados, see it says heads of state, right? And the government. The heads of states and the government. Of the Argentine Republic, Barbados, uh, Belize, and the Federal Republic of Brazil, Canada, the Republic of Chile, the Republic of Colombia, the Republic of Costa Rica, the Republic of Ecuador, the Republic of El Salvador, and I highlighted that for a reason, the Republic of Guatemala, uh, Cooperative Republic of Guyana, 
the Republic of Haiti, the Republic of Honduras, uh, Jamaica, the United Mexican States, that's, that's technically Mexico, the Republic of Panama, the Republic of Paraguay, the Republic of Peru, the United States of America, and the Oriental Republic of Uruguay gathered in Los Angeles on the margins of the so on the margins of the Ninth Summit of the Americas, reiterate our will to strengthen national, regional, and hemispheric efforts to create uh, conditions for safe, orderly, humane, regular uh, migration, and to strengthen the framework for international protection. Notice they didn't say be signed. All right, but this is. This is uh, what he uh, put out there. Um, this is what he put out there to state that the Bahamas is enlisted there. So the Bahamas didn't uh, uh, agree to what was happening. All right. And so that is what uh, Luby George has found the time to go and say. Now, there was a lot of, of back and forth with this. There was a lot of discord which if you take a little bit of time and you look at what was really going on uh, at this summit, you realize that a lot yeah, of persons, there. a lot of countries, uh, well, not a lot, but uh, mm. four or five countries actually did not show up. First they said it was three, then they realized it was four, then it was five. Countries actually didn't even show up. And the reason I highlighted those Names is because this that is listed on here actually didn't the, the heads of state didn't show up. El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico. Okay, and I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you that. So there were countries that were there that was not on here, and there was countries that are on here that shouldn't have been on here. Is what I'm saying. And so let me let you. Watch this for a minute. And the summit of the Americas is underway in Los Angeles, but a key member won't be there. That's right. Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador said he will not attend as the U.S. excluded representatives from three countries, Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. Joining us now. I'm sorry. They still have, they still have the other document over the screen sorry you gotta get that uh, off there for you so we're gonna play that for you again and so i want you to see exactly this for yourselves and i want you to stay focused all right i want you to stay focused don't let these fellas who have an agenda trick you and the summit of the americas is underway in los angeles but a key member won't be there that's right. Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador said he will not attend because the U.S. excluded representatives from three countries, Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. Joining us now to talk more about this, former U.S. Ambassador to Mexico, and Bill Garza. He is old. So I wanted to highlight that for you, for you to see that Mexico is on that list, but uh, the head of state refused Mexico's president, Andres Manuel López Obrador, decided not to come here to Los Angeles for the Summit of the Americas because the U.S. refused to invite the Cuban regime to the summit. He specifically blamed Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chair Bob Menendez, saying the U.S. decision to exclude Cuba was made, quote, on the grudges of one man, forgetting the people, acting out of hate, and who has great influence but does not use it for good. With us now is New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez. Senator, it's always a pleasure to see you, sir. I just... Just. So again, you see where they say that he wasn't there. Um, much conflicted. You see where he said he wasn't there. That's the one where they're going to show you the, uh, uh, what they have to the say. Western Hemisphere. All right. So there's a, let me pull up another one for you. Uh, where is it? I want to pull up. Is that it? Yes. Fear convened in Los Angeles for the largest regional gathering summit. Now I'm going to pause this for you. These are the people who they said signed on. 
I want you to look at this man right here. That man right there. That's great. All right. Um, look at him. There he is. Look at him. Standing up, shoulders back, teeth showing. Only one whose teeth is showing. And in place as one of the persons who was a part of this declaration. Let's hear some more from this. And we're going to make For sense of this. The largest regional gathering summit of the Americas outlined some of the most pressing challenges facing the region. Oi. Today, one of the most pressing challenges facing the Americas is the crisis of irregular migration. Irregular. This talk of a regular migration came out of these summits. The Bahamas doesn't have irregular migration. We have illegal migration. We have a law where you can actually go to jail for up to two years, be fined for up to $50,000 as it relates to illegal migration. And so for us, this is a criminal matter. Yes. And so now for... Brave Davis to be changing the words. And now the, 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 the immigration uh, minister, Keith Bell, is now using that word irregular migration. That is not within our laws. This comes from these same summits. That they're now changing their talks all of a sudden. So the question is, oh, did he sign? Did he not sign? But he's coming back with the verbiage. And we're seeing other things. In place. They start talking about, about uh, 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 all kinds of other laws as it relates to immigration, asylum, etc. Are they really trying to bring the citizenship law back as a way to sneak in other laws? Ah, let's keep listening though. The migration has its roots in the lack of opportunities for the population mm -hmm. in the migrants' country of origin. Leaders also highlighted some of the root causes for the ongoing migration crises. The fight against inequality, we can say, continues to be one of the greatest unfinished tasks of our region. Organized crime is transnational. The answers to face it must also be transnational. At a time when the COVID-19 pandemic has taken a devastating toll on many local economies, the United States announced a number of new initiatives. The America's Health Corps aims to train half a million healthcare workers across the region, and a total of $3.2 billion in private investments aimed to create jobs, fight corruption, and improve the internet infrastructure, and more. But aside from all the commitments and promises, the decision made by the U.S. not to invite Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua to the summit were widely criticized. Being the summit's host country does not grant the ability to impose the right of admission on the countries of the continent. In protest, the presidents of Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Bolivia have all shunned the event, but President Biden remained confident. Oh, wow. Let's go back a little bit and let's hear who those countries were. They weren't even there. They shunned the event. The President Biden remained confident the summit was still a success. Okay. The presidents of okay. Mexico, Guatemala, San Salvador, Honduras, and Bolivia skipped the event, skipped the summit. They even Thank you, was this the article? Was this the article shared by Ruby Georgia? Yes. You mean this one I'm playing? No, the, the declaration. Yes, it was. Okay. That's what he shared. And it showed all the countries, and he was using that to say that the Bahamas wasn't on the list. And I'm trying to show you that that list isn't reliable because of all the confusion. There were talks before, so certain things were committed to, but then after they saw some things happen they didn't like, they some of them said, we're not even coming, we're not going to participate, you can go to hell. Some of them sent uh, uh, other persons in government, but not the head of state, so they can't really sign on to nothing. Um, so uh, that's what happened. But I want to look at these. Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Bolivia. Okay? Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Bolivia. All right? Got to stop sharing for a minute. Um, and so we come back here. 
Let's look at the, the document again that he shared. Mm. El Salvador, they listed. But see, El Salvador said he wasn't there. Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico wasn't there. And also Bolivia. Now, Bolivia wasn't, uh, rightly wasn't listed. They're not here. So, but these ones were listed. And yes, Mexico had made commitments to doing certain things. But they decided we're not showing up. And so I said that to say that agreements were made, deals were made. You can't go by these little press statements that were going out. That's what they are, basically, to know who did what. But I can tell you one thing. Um, I am, from what I am seeing, uh, our prime minister was there in all his glory, standing up with the people who said that they sign on to this agreement. I'm going to show you again. Uh, I'm going to show you again one more uh, uh, video. All right. But Biden says, despite these people not showing up, they still think it was success. And now we're standing some of the disagreements relating to participation on the substantive matters. What I heard was almost unity, uniformity, rational migration policy, doing something about the need to provide access to recovery and funding, a situation where we concluded that we must work on the environment and climate change and so many other things. Biden says he heard almost unity and uniformity on the substantive matters, but any final declaration that's signed here will require full cooperation of all member states for a successful outcome. But with the absence of key stakeholders that are at the heart of issues like the migration crisis or organized crime development, it is unclear how much progress can be made. It is Tianshan, CG. And so last one, this is the one that you've seen already. Um, and this is... Last day of much conflicted the America summit, United States unveiled its migration plan for the region. U.S. President Joe Biden, along with leaders from countries in the Western Hemisphere, pledged to step up actions on the regional migration crisis. Now, 20 countries joined Biden for a ceremonial unveil the plan. This right here. He joined Biden on stage for the unveiling of the plan. He joined Biden on stage. This is Philip Brave Davis right here in the middle in the middle of everybody that's philip brave davis right there all of their positions unmistakable and so their position is that they joined him on stage to rosing out incentives for countries taking in large migrants and spreading responsibility across the region Measures also include the United States and Canada taking in more guest laborers, providing pathways for people from, from poor countries to work in richer ones, and offering greater protection for migrants. 20 countries coming together to launch the Los Angeles Declaration on Migration and Protection. With this declaration, we're transforming our approach to managing migration in the Americas. Each of us, each of us is signing up to commitments that recognizes the challenges we all share and the responsibility it impacts on all of our nations. Now, press. And so you've seen the rest of that already. You go look it up yourselves. Uh, here. Here is an article on this by, uh, by the Times. Biden administration chairs new migration agreement, uh, agreement. Experts say it may not do much. And they're saying that because uh, many of the persons they had on the list as signing didn't sign, et cetera. All right. So having issues with the share screen, I'm sorry. Uh, let me go back into that again. I want you to, to see these articles that these people are putting out. They was trying to make it seem like there was a lot of pressure put on him. 
either relate to this, but no one pressure on anybody. Oh my God, this isn't screen sharing. As you can see, it's having some issues. I don't know why this is doing that. Okay, went past it. Top leaders from Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Mexico, Cuba, and Venezuelan nations that collectively account for most e-migration, which is different from immigration, to the U.S. Mexico border. Immigration is you uh, uh, move out, right? Immigration is you come into a country, all right? Did not even attend the ninth summit of the host, all right? And so uh, they didn't attend it, and they gave lists um, of persons who didn't attend it. And so you can see that there's a serious problem going on here. And if you look at the end of this article, I'm going to put this up here so you can go and read it. It says, wow, the nation being in the Los Angeles. Let me see, let me see. Oh, they are putting together an uh, investment of $1.6 billion, et cetera. So there's a lot to read here. Migration, Park to Cap, America's Summit. So if you want to do some research, I'm sure you need to go back look at it. And this is from Reuters. That is very, uh, this is the most credible news source that you're going at around the world right now uh, for the public system. Um, all right, and they're talking about this path and what happened at the park. And you go back and read this for yourself. All right, and see exactly what the deal is. So they have a that message has been clouded by partial boycott of leaders, including the president uh, in uh, of Mexico's president, in protest of Washington's uh, 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 not including certain countries. All right, and so I just showed you this to show you that that they have some list there. We can take them. All right, it says the absence of the leaders of Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador have uh, doubts about how effective about how effective uh, how effectively proposed pledges will become reality u.s officials said a turnout would not prevent washington from getting results all right and so this is what really went down um, and so what i have learned in my years of dealing with politics and politicians you don't watch what they say, you watch what they're doing. And so if a man tells me that he didn't go to the movies, but he come back uh, with popcorn and mustard seed uh, stain from a hot dog on his shirt, um, I can assume he been to the movies. He might not have been. He might have got the popcorn from the carnival. But I'm going to assume he been to the movies. All right? Um what we saw when Brave Davis come back was a change in verbiage that is against our laws. We saw that there are no more uh, flights uh, repatriating persons, taking them back to where they come from. We see that now they're saying that only 35 Haitians are in the detention center, 99 Cubans in there. That's very suspicious to me, <laughs> extremely when boats were landing and you just took some people on the boat there. So where did these people go? We see that these government officials are trying to make it seem like no boats have landed. The defense force, Commodore said no boats have landed illegally in this country. The fact that you would be bold enough to say that shows me that you are lying. Because you would not know. You could speak to what you caught. You cannot speak to what you didn't catch. You cannot say that you caught every boat that landed. While in Abaco, they could see the population multiplying exponentially. In, in Andres, they could see the population multiplying exponentially. In Eleuther, the same thing. But you're going to say that no boats landed illegally. And you're <coughs> patting yourselves on the shoulder to say that. You are going out of your way to make it seem like there isn't a problem. That shows me that there is a problem because we are watching what you're doing. You're justifying this evil. And for me, that is a problem. 
And so Grave Davis came back, and all of a sudden you can see certain things in place. They're trying to push this citizenship law on us. And Ms. Green, the problem I have with this is that I spent time in Haiti trying to help those people. I realize that there's some of them there that you, you don't help, and you can't. No matter how much you're helping them, it don't matter. You see what they did to the um, to the, the charity workers that came there. Kidnapped them, so they were going to kill each one. You had to give them a million dollars each, or they going to kill them. You see what's going on there, and we're trying to protect our borders. I want to show you some videos from the past. Before it got to this, just to remind you what you're all about, the experience of y'all let Philip Brave Davis, them fool y'all. They have sold out. If y'all are going to sell out this country, then y'all don't deserve to have this. If you're going to sit back and let them change citizenship laws and, and change immigration laws and change everything to give away this country, then you all don't deserve to have this. I want to show you all something. I'm going to show you all a couple of, of videos from a few years ago when Brave Davis, on the stage. When, when Brave Davis was... Uh, when Brave Davis was the the Minister of Works, so he was responsible for breaking down these shanty down. Now he's playing like he's Asian. And Fred Mitchell was the 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 leader. Sorry, the Minister of Immigration. I want to show you this. This is what our immigration, well, immigration officials face. are having serious challenges carrying out the new policy, which requires all undocumented persons to leave the country. In one instance, a man believed to be a police officer allegedly hindered immigration officers from carrying out their duties. It was all caught on a video and circulated on social media. Arjunina Well Ferguson spoke with officials on the matter today. Since the new immigration policy came into effect on November 1st, Senior immigration officials say they've had serious challenges while carrying out their duties. In this video, a man identifies himself as a police officer and accuses immigration officers of abusing suspected illegals. The man is arguing with immigration officers over the matter, and it's a situation that officer in charge of enforcement for immigration, Kirkland Neely, says is concerning as civilians and illegals hinder the department's efforts. Now, Officer Neely noted that in recent weeks, a number of his officers were injured while on the job. Some fraction of him in um, uh, interfering and stuff like that. These illegals now tend to believe they right. And whatever they do, it's supposed to be right, because they have a little back and encroachment. But let me send a warning out to them now. Anything that happens, that's a no-no. So if you be gone, I am really pissed about it for the law. Must I have four officers went down um, by injury from the hands of illegal immigrants, all right? These a few behemoths who, who are trying to be distraction and make it for that. I didn't hear anybody came and speak about some second time side of it. Four officers assaulted, went down, injured by the illegal immigrants they were trying to arrest assaulted, beat up. These are a violent people, not all Haitians. Nothing I say ref references all Haitians. But I'm concerned about the bad ones. Why? Because they don't need to be here. They are people. They're their own people. They have their own country. I'm concerned about those ones. Because if that was Bahamians beat up an officer like that, no. what they would have do to a Bahamian young man? In fact, they, he might have been dead. Dead. I kill him. I'll, I'll let this continue. Bahamians who support illegals in these acts should be made accountable as well. No part of the world, no part of this world, on the lake, you could have illegals and officers and they execute off their duty and people be giving up and giving them right. And like I say, I'm sick and tired of it and it ain't gonna happen no more. Now, as for the police officer involved in this matter, 
Bailey says the case has been turned over to the police force. I'm turning it over to the police, and I'm going to be dealing with that matter on a later date. One of the senior officers spoke to me um, uh, um, uh, earlier today, and he said that we'll be dealing with it on, on, um, uh, on, on Monday coming. Meanwhile, Director of Immigration William Pratt says the department remains resolute in bringing their duties. From the newsroom, I'm Janana Wilson, ZNES Network News. And so this was years ago. Now they feel they have more population now, they have more strength now, and more position now. This is from December 30th, 2014. Responding I am to concerned. I am concerned that people are soft and docile people. We are very placid people. We are very passive people. And I don't think we understand what's in store. There are good Haitians that they can be here and we can have a better nation. I'm not talking about them, but there are some bad ones. Who Luby and them are encouraging by covering for them and putting up posts like, oh, see, uh, everything is good in Haiti. Don't, don't think they're going to come and flood here while we are seeing the flood happening. Now the Minister of Immigration is admitting that there is an influx. All over the world, they're talking about an influx of boats leaving Haiti. But what he's trying to do is, Luby is trying to make you think, oh, they, they ain't coming here. They, they could behave. Trust me. Just let them come, let them fill up Haiti so that he can be prime minister, which is what he always wanted to be. This is the story about the gentleman who, the Haitian young man, I want y'all to see this one. This is one of the interesting. Rodrigue, well, I'll, I'll play it first, and then I'm going to show you one with the Haitian ambassador at the time. So now they're talking about us, uh, talking about being organic Bahamians. But how about the Haitian ambassador at the time was differentiating citizenship? And I'll show you why. But let me play this uh, portion of this first. More unfolding on the status of Haitian migrants in the Bahamas. Last night, we told you of a shanty town that was demolished in the Joe Farrington Road area by the landowners. This decision left residents upset and angry. But it was one comment made in particular by a young Haitian Bahamian that left some Bahamians simply outraged. See, Oscar Adderley has this report. You gotta understand it's more Asian BM in this country and BM in the swap. I'm sorry for my language. You see how you said? We ain't scared. They don't want to start something with their good hand finish, but it was a very. They didn't play what he actually said. All of what he actually said. This was the young man who talked about the Colombian necktie for Bahamians. That's him. Colombian neckties for y'all. While you're all sitting down, thinking the people poor, you must have sympathy on them. And they, they, you're just going to live in peace. They can stay in their shanty towns forever. Something else coming. And I don't think Bahamians, I don't think your children ready for that. Statement that created a firestorm on social media, prompting hundreds of Bahamians to share their extreme pleasure on Friday at just off Joe Farrington Road was demolished more than a year after the residents were given a 30-day notice, but still those residents remained on the property. On Saturday, a news team took to the streets to get Bahamian's reaction to this controversial comment. To say the least, the let me remind you, Brave Davis demolished that shanty down, uh, along with Fred Mitchell. But you see how they use the short memories to play on these people every election. Because they know that they remember all that. And you can tell them you can work with them now. And whereas they're now sleeping with the enemy. Because they feel that they somehow they can look out for them. Brave Davis, send that truck to them. And Fred Mitchell was dragging their children from them. The residents we spoke to were extremely upset. Saying that something must be done because the country's immigration problem is out of hand. I was really upset when I heard the news last night. Very highly upset. This is our Bahamian country, and I think foreigners who come here ought to respect our country. I was last night was poor taste. I think we really need to do something about them and stop them before they get, you know, 
to to um boisterous country. It's an actual act of, I guess, a war, but wanting to start a war, saying that any time we can have an uprising in your country. That's like someone coming in your home, going into your bedroom, and then telling you what you can do in there, and not to tell them anything. And I'm trying to figure out exactly how do they feel that's even going to make sense. But there's one resident who strongly disagreed, calling on Bahamians to be more understanding. We were all illegal immigrants as far as I'm concerned. We became nationalized because of slavery. Yes. And so when I see the Haitian, as far as I'm concerned, my great great grandparents or some or family, whether it's Haiti, whether it's St. Kitts, whether it's Jamaica, whether, wherever it is in this world, those people can very well be some of my relatives. Do you understand? So I think that in an effort to, to the church needs to step in. We need to try and understand even more. Do you understand? These are people who are impoverished, who are running away, trying to have a better life. The Bahamians do not understand poverty. When you get the majority of people in this country without, then we will begin to understand poverty. Meantime, immigration officials are expected to address the matter during a press conference sometime tomorrow. Siaska Adderley, ZNS Network News. More unfolding on the status of... And so there's one more for me to show you. Um, of course, uh, uh, you heard even uh, Roche Sands there talking about the poverty, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of us were deceived about the actual situation there. A lot of Bahamians never knew, especially at the time, that there were, there were um, 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 800,000 wealthy Haitians who should be doing for their country. A lot of people at the time, that, of course, is in 2014, but they didn't realize that just a few years before that, in 2010, they were given $13.5 billion by the international community. And where did it go? What did they do with it? It went to those same people, like people wearing those white clothes that you saw earlier, and other uh, wealthy white oligarchs in Haiti. They're black oligarchs also. So a lot of us are of the opinion that, ah, these are some poor people, man. Let's just, let's just help them. No, all of them are not poor or in poverty, he fell uh, uh, for that uh, deceit. There are some who are, and there are some who are leaving because they are. But why aren't their own people helping them? If receiving 13.5 million, billion with a B dollars, didn't help you, I don't think our 2.5 billion dollar budget will work for you and us. I don't think so. This is, I think this is the same Haitian leader who was on the news telling people to vote PLP, but there he is. This is a PLP Haitian that you're going to see. I'm sorry about the commercial, but I'm playing from YouTube. Haitian parents afraid to send their children to school. This as the Haitian ambassador responds to inflammatory comments posted on social media. Plus, a man convicted of incest will serve five years. We've got those stories and a whole lot more coming up tonight. I'm wanting to end and 12 starts now. Topping news tonight, one day after the Haitian ambassador warned that immigration rates could give the Bahamas a bad image, a leader in the Haitian community is today speaking out against what he calls the inhumane treatment of Haitians. He says Haitian parents are now afraid to send their children to school. Kyle Walking reports. <laughs> Joel Pierre has been living in this Haitian village for six years now. He said what he saw on Saturday was heartbreaking. He said he has no issue with the government implementing its new immigration policy. However, he wishes it would be done in a more humane way. Joel Pierre lives at the shanty town just off Joe Farrington Road. Thankful that immigration officers have not yet hit their village, he tells MB12 how he feels the way the immigration policy has been rolled out is an injustice. With images of children being taken from their homes circulating all over the internet, Pierre says he shares the sentiments of the Haitian ambassador in saying it will... Let me remind you that that was Fred Mitchell who was dragging their children uh, 
and it was Brave Davis who was breaking their homes down. Leave a bad image on the Bahamas, and with some of Haitian descent publicly expressing their disgust with Bahamians and the new policy on social media, as well as rumors of an uprising, Pierre is asking for there to be calm among his fellow Haitians. Don't be mad with the Bahamian or the Bahamian children. Don't get mad with the Bahamians. They have absolutely nothing to do with what's happening right now. It's the government. The government are doing what they're supposed to do. Let them do what they have to do. If they think it's good for the future of the country, fine. But if they think that we that we do an impact on the on the future of the country, let them think. Because I believe that they do, they have to sit down before they do it. However, just minutes after speaking with Pierre, one of the men in the village began waving his machete at our cameraman and asked if he wanted to get the Colombian necktie. Said Saturday's So this is another one, and the new team experienced this, that they were threatened. The news team, if we don't get this in control now, I'm concerned for the bad ones. Not all of them are like that. But there are good Haitians living in this country who are also afraid of the bad ones coming here. The news team was threatened with a cutlass and a Colombian necktie. Exercise has left many Haitian children afraid to even go to school. You have children yesterday who scared. I've been missing so much calls from parents that they say, Joel, can I send my children to school? They scared to send their children to school. Even the children, they scared whenever. It was not like this before. They used to walk on the street with no problem because they know that's their hometown, that's their country, that's where they born. But now, they scared to go in. You tell them, get you to go to school. Oh, oh, I ain't going. Police gonna catch me. Immigrants gonna take me. This Haitian leader says he's even worried about his own children. Despite having a payment passport, he still considers himself a Haitian by blood and fears for his children. He even went back to the campaign by the Progressive Liberal Party leading up to the 2012 general election, where the then opposition leader Perry Christie said there is no such thing as a Haitian Bahamian. As I remember on a campaign time when the PLP was doing their campaign, I, sorry, I was on a, I was there with, when the uh, when the when the Prime Minister Mr. Christie says. There is no such thing as Haitian Bahamians, no such thing as Jamaican Bahamians. Once you have a Bahamian passport, you are a Bahamian. No matter who are your mom, who is your daddy, once you have the Bahamian passport, you are a Bahamian. Okay? Now, just like many other shanty towns across in Providence, this one is in the process of being torn down. And residents say up to just last week, there are people still living in these homes. The rubble from the home of this Haitian Bahamian is still being cleared by tractors. Michel said he's not really upset about the new policy, but by the fact that so many lives, including his, are being turned upside down. One got people, you don't got us. Where you think? We think people, how much people, maybe 1,000 people, and you move our village. We think all 1,000 people sleep in, in, in them small house. They got to sleep in car, they got to sleep next people. He make next people got power over him because he can't find place for where he yet to keep his children. It don't make sense. Reporting for MB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. And Haitian nationals living in a shanty town also weighed in on the immigration raids. Simone Davis has that angle. Following Saturday's immigration raids, many people took to social media to express how they felt about the exercises, which resulted in 77 legal migrants being held at the Carmichael Road Detention Center. Some people felt the apprehension exercise was inhumane and expressed anger and outrage, while others insisted that the raids were long overdue. And we well, spoke with a number of Haitian nationals living in a local shanty town. They say they respect the government's decision to cut illegal migration. However, they are still hurt by the way it happened. Law is law. They have a right to do what they have to do. But it's uh, terrible. Really. My heart, even I eat, I'm taken. But my sisters and brothers, like Asian people, who can't even speak and Mr. Good. So that made they feel, they feel like a terrible, but it's still, still, when I, when I say that, I'm not saying they don't have a right to do it, 
they do it, they have a reason why to do it. Some Bahamians agree with the government's gesture to eliminate foreign immigrants. Say, although it is sad that it has to be done in the form of a raid, it is the government's duty to fully protect the Bahamian people by any means necessary. I do agree with the policy and I do agree that it's about time because we don't enforce laws, especially with even our own people. And um, it's just a sad thing that it's a lot more Haitians than other nationalities. For a long time, we as Bahamians right, need to do something about this situation. And I am glad to see that this government has taken steps now to correct whatever problems they've been into. We have to go through a just process. Right, to make sure that we treat them properly, but at the same time, we satisfy the Amy public. The exercise took place on the day government's new immigration policy took effect. It requires all non Bahamians to a passport of their nationality and evidence that they have permission to live and work. In so he admits that Saturday's raid sparked outrage among some Haitians. The Haitian ambassador says Haitians are not violent people. And suggested that some people making inflammatory comments online may be of Haitian descent but were born and raised in the Bahamas. Antonio Rodriguez says Haitians are very peaceful people. So, in other words, he is saying there's real Haitians and then there's another set of Haitian who was born in the Bahamas. So, he is discriminating against the Haitians born in the Bahamas. What he is saying is that the real Haitians, they're good. But this said who born over here, that's a different kind. So they are discriminating. They are loving themselves by saying, listen, the real Haitians who have that Bahamian blood in them or, or Bahamian soil in them, they the good people. And so they are loving themselves, but they have a problem. People now have a problem with us saying that we are organic Bahamians. And I'm going to tell you why we call ourselves that again in a minute. You never heard about Haitian. I'm talking about Haitian. I'm not talking about Bahamian from Haitian descent. You never heard about Haitian being involved in crime and things like that. Look at the, what happened at the Shanty Town. The guy who made those comments, he's a Bahamian. He has a Bahamian passport. Born here, raised here, never been to Haiti. But when they're talking, they talk about Haitian. He's not Haitian, he's a Bahamian. The Haitian ambassador dismissed any suggestion that strong reaction from some Haitians to recent immigration raids could lead to violence, insisting that Haitians come to the Bahamas in search of a better life and should not be blamed for things that happen. They are not like, we're going to march, we are going to do this, like that. Yeah, they can have some very, you know, uh, first of all, I'm going to say there are some, I don't know, some of the a few, who can be, I know, because of frustration, they would like to do this, whatever. But I can tell you, no one in the Haitian community is going to support them, to go with them, or to encourage them. For instance, Rodriguez says Anthony Ali, who made headlines last month when he threatened violence against Bahamians, is a Bahamian national of Haitian heritage, not a Haitian. So don't blame Haitians when things happen. We are very peaceful people. We are very work hard, Haitian work hard, look at that. But the development, the Haitian have contributed greatly to the development of the Bahamas, doing jobs Bahamian does, don't want to do. The Haitian ambassador suggested that Haitians stick together because they often deal with prejudice in the Bahamas. He also took exception to some Bahamians' claims that Haitians are taking their jobs, insisting Haitians the jobs Bahamians don't. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I don't even want to, to, to hear or play the rest of what this, this demonic man has to say. Um, uh, Miss Green, you watched all of that. How does it make you feel? Well, Lincoln, I don't like to talk about my feelings too much in reference to what's going on. Um, but it seems like if we don't get a handle on this, because it's already out of control, our children coming up will not be able to deal with this situation. This is something that we right now have the opportunity to, to deal with. And it would be, it would be quite uh, a shame and disastrous if we was to kick this can down the road for our children to deal with. 
And this is why I said that we are the executives and her inheritors of this island. We have just as much responsibility as the government. We are just as responsible. This is something that we all allow to happen. Each one of us is not without blame. But the good thing is, we know what's going on, okay? We have the opportunity now to make some changes. But it takes all of us as Bahamians uniting. The same way the um, ambassador, the former ambassador, the same way the former ambassador said um, to, to his people, you all need to stick together. Bahamians need to come together. There is no way that we can, um, we can move forward as a nation of, of divide. We have to come together. Forward, upward, onward, together. Doesn't that mean anything? We allow politics to divide us when we should be holding our political leaders accountable. Us. But they use us to fight against each other, to separate us. The weaker this nation is, the easier it is to take control of, manipulate, deceive. Bahamians, we have to make a decision to stand up against the corruption in this country. You know, I always tell people when I hear them say um, something like, you COI people, you COI people. I have to remind persons that the group you see here before you, no, they are not COI. They are Bahamians. Bahamians. They were former PLPs, former FNMs, DNAs. Bahamians who have never voted before. They are a group of Bahamians who are sick and tired of going through the same thing we are going through for decades. We are a people who have been disrespected for years. They don't even respect the constitution of our country, the constitution, which is the highest law, the highest law of the land. They completely disregard it. Oh, if they don't like what we're doing, they can take us to court and sue us, sue you, the government. We're actually suing ourselves, the people. Make it make sense. We need to put things in place. We need to have things in place where when our leaders, when our leaders break the law, they pay for their crimes by being placed in jail. Not the Bahamians or the government being sued. That is not, that is not a real punishment because it's us who are paying for these um, lawsuits. It's us. It's us. Bahamians, we have to get serious about the business of our country because let me tell you something, other nationals are very serious about the business of our country. While we pay attention to these, I don't want to call their names on this live, but while we pay attention to these um, um, distractions, we have persons penetrating our country, taking over whilst we are asleep. We must mind the business of our country or else we won't have a country. And we must start holding our, our leaders accountable. Accountability is the highest form right now. We need to start using. We need to have them held accountable. Stop sleeping. When you open your eyes, there will not be a country left. And we will find ourselves in the same position trying to leave this country in droves for a better life. It's happening now. Yeah. That's happening now. Yeah, and that, that takes us to this this next um this next uh, uh member of the circus, this clown, um Ryan Pinder, um, who now says that uh, they, the government, the Bahamian people don't know what they want. He says that the Bahamian people failed twice. He says that the Bahamian people uh, failed twice and that uh, they don't know what they want. The Bahamian people failed in the referendum twice. How is that a fail because they didn't do what you wanted them to do? And I want you to notice something. This agenda, this isn't just 
a PLP agenda. The PLP put it up and the FNM put it up before that. They are one. Both of them put forward this agenda. I will tell you, this citizenship bill is being used as a Trojan horse. I informed everyone last time, everyone, when they were doing that last referendum, that there was no need for that referendum. There was no need for that referendum. I told everybody that this was a Trojan horse. And I'm not the only person who told people this. But that was for the number four bill that had to do with sexuality. That is what that referendum was about. Because the first three, they didn't need a referendum for that. It was number four they were trying to sneak in. But they were trying to make it seem like it was about equal rights for women or equal rights for behavior as related uh, to passing on citizenship. It wasn't about that. It was about y'all sneaking that in. And I will say to all of the Bahamian people again today, this uh, uh, resurgence of this citizenship uh, bill is not about equality, just like it wasn't about equality before. This is about them putting in citizenship bills to allow our borders to be flooded with others. I guarantee you it. Mark my words or lose your nation. That is why this was brought up again. This has nothing to do with equality for genders. Nothing. This has one purpose. They want to change the citizenship laws so that they can do what they want to do and give to who they want to give to. That is what this is about. Bahamians, open your eyes. They're now going to change the Procurement Act, the Public Procurement Act. The Prime Minister has admitted that the government is breaking the law as it relates to the Public Procurement Act. He admitted that. He said that they're breaking the law because the law makes it too difficult for them to do what they want to do. The Prime Minister said that in any other country, they would have shut this nation down already. The Prime Minister said he's breaking the law. I think he just go change the law. I want you to see this with your own eyes. Watch this how Prime Minister Philip Davis is describing the public procurement bill that was passed under the former Minister administration. While admitting the government hasn't followed that law, Davis says the act, which came into force on September 1st, 2021, is causing some issues. If we were to follow uh, the law as it is, we'll never be able to bring the relief to people, particularly you, you would have seen the challenges that we had at the hospital. If we were to follow that, we'd probably still be in the portals trying to address the issues. The legislation, among other things, is crafted to provide transparency when it comes to how government ministries, departments, and other agencies enter contracts and expect spend public money. The Act states that publication of procurement notes should be published in the Gazette or in one or more newspapers of wide circulation. Davis says the law doesn't allow for a quick reaction. We are an archipelago and so whatever construct we have has to take into account our peculiar and particular circumstance. We have to be able to respond to the needs of our people almost immediately in some instances. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> The Procurement Act put some things in place to make sure the government can't, you know, do what they want to do. Can't steal the people's money. They're saying, listen, we're getting rid of that so that we can do what we want to do. Right in your face, they're doing all of this. Right in your face. The PLP has learned a lesson from the FNM because the PLP used to do things under the table. The FNM used to do it right on the table. And the PLP now realizes that once we tell the public, they ain't going to do nothing because behaviors are soft. They'll make some noise and then after that they go away, you know. And then they vote us out in five years. But by then we're already rich. And we just wait, enjoy our five years and then come back five years later and then make some more money. And so they realize that. And so they're doing everything on the table in your face. And so this is what they're doing. They came in right away and they said, listen, we're doing a PPP to build some houses. Our walk home is going to be doing it. 
That's it. You heard uh, you heard uh, Wayne Monroe on the on the on the Crown Land uh, speaking to me. He said, "Listen, we could do what we want to do, and if you don't like it, you vote us out in five years." That is the mentality, the arrogant mentality that they have developed. The same minister mentality. Brian Pinder said the same thing. Listen, we could do what we want to do, and if you don't like it, sue us. That is the mentality over our dead bodies and calling on every Bahamian to stand with us. As we stand against this, we're going to have a town hall meeting. We're planning a town hall meeting for next week. It may be as soon as next week, Sunday. Watch my Facebook page. You're going to see uh, the flyers are going to go out uh, shortly. We're going to make the arrangements. A town hall meeting. We're calling on everyone to be there. We're calling on you to come, to speak with your, with your presence. We're calling a town hall meeting. This one is going to be indoor AC. Indoor AC. And we're going to speak. And we're going to let you speak. And we are going to let them hear us. We're going to let Ryan Pinder hear us. And to Ms. Green, I'm telling them now about this town hall meeting that we are going to plan for next week, Sunday. I think next week, Sunday at 5. Next week, Sunday yeah. at 5. So instead of this live, we're going to be there. Um, and that's what we're going to do. Next week, Sunday at 5, on the citizenship bill and on this immigration situation that we're dealing with. We need to educate ourselves and we need to let them see that we are serious. Yes. We're telling you, so it's time to come. We have to take this to them. And so we're going to start with a, with a town hall uh, meeting for every true Bahamian. doesn't matter if you support us or not. Every Bahamian should want to stand up for this because the attorney general is saying they don't care how you all voted. They are going to break the law. And the Constitution is very clear on that. That if you want to change something in the Constitution, it must go before the people. And they are finding a way to snake their way around it again. But you got to wake up. And so we're calling you next week Sunday at 5 p.m. Be there. We're going to have a town hall meeting. And we are going to address this. Yes. So if you're there, let me know. Go ahead, Mr. So, so we need everyone to just pay attention to the Coalition of Independence page, the date, the time and the venue will be placed on the page. Okay, so we would like for everyone to come out and support yourself. This is not about a coalition of independence. This is about a coalition of Bahamians. This is about Bahamians. We have to fight and preserve our country. We have to let our voices be heard. Okay, they're clearly showing that they do not care what we have to say in reference to the governance of our country. So we have to make them hear us. We have to be serious. We have to be serious. We have to be a force standing for our country in the front of our children so that they can have something. So please pay attention to the Coalition of Independence page as well as the Bahamian Evolution page and the website. We will post the information um, in reference to the time, venue, and the date. Thank you for that. Now what I want to do is I want to open the phone lines because we always want to take questions before we go. And uh, Ms. Green, you can monitor the chat to see if any questions are in there. Um, and also, we're going to open the phone line so you can actually call in now. What's up, call, please? Please, what's up, call us. Um, keep it simple. Uh, what's up, call us, and tell us how you feel about everything we've discussed today, um, everything that we've said. Uh, what's up, call us. Uh, call us on WhatsApp at 8035995. 8035995. The lines are open. Please call and, and voice your opinion. Um, it's time to stand up. We can't sit down and let this country go down the drain. Because Lincoln, I see Roma Bartlett. She put a question up. She said, Lord, why do we have to fight for our own country? Why? Wow. Listen, the Bahamas is one of the most valuable. The Bahamas is a natural resort, first of all. First of all. 
And I believe the most valuable resource in our country is our people. And our people, whether you believe it or not, are being exploited. Not only the raw material, natural resources, but our people and their labor. Because our people are such a hospitable race, I'm sorry, because our people are such a hospitable sets of people, we are also being exploited. Everyone wants what we have, everyone. So therefore the force is going to be strong. Like I said last week, we are basically repeating the same history. The Arawaks went through right here in this part of um, the um, hemisphere. We are going through the same thing. They did yeah. not know what they had. They did not know what they had. And before we knew it, before they knew it, everything was gone and their people were annihilated. To be no more but Bahamians, we have to stand up and fight. We do. We do. 803-5995 is the number. Uh, please call us in. Let us know that you're there. Um, let us know what you have to say. Have your voice. Ask your question or make your statement. Um, um, that's on you. I see uh, uh, someone said, uh, someone said uh, uh, that the Bahamian women are having uh, babies with, with Asian men, and that's causing a problem. Uh, someone else says, Lincoln, where will you expose the persons who are taking the immigration stamp, whom selling the papers? They're actually taking the immigration stamp to an office, an office on on Palmdale, and that's where they're doing it. We've warned them. I'm going to answer the call. Good afternoon. Welcome you live. Good afternoon. You're live. Hello. Good yes. Afternoon. We can hear you. Good afternoon. You're live. Yes, I wanted to know uh, which after the uh, ask the. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I wanted to know after after the town hall meeting, uh, what is the next step? Because that need, looks like there needs to be protests. Um, there will be more than just protests. But come to the town hall meeting and find out. All right. There will be more than just protests. They want you to just protest. That's what they want. All right. But come to the town hall meeting and find out. But this one on this one, we can't relent because they've been giving away our land and now they're going to give away our citizenship and we can't let that happen. Yeah, because it seems like that needs to be. Uh, yeah. Why not? Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, man. I think he was listening to the Facebook and list, trying to listen to the phone at the same time. Um, listen, this has been a long time coming. It's time for Bahamians to stand up. If you are serious, I am serious. We can't just give this away. You've seen what is happening. You've seen where there are different rules for them than there are for us. You're seeing where our, uh, our, our young men selling coconuts in the streets are being locked up while they can sell fruits, coal, anything they want on Cow Pen Road during the whole lockdown. No rule for them. You're seeing where they can take our crown land and then have government lying for them, saying that, oh, all of their shanty downs are on private property. Blatant lie because they just don't want to touch them. And then attacking Bahamians. You can see what's going on. Wake up. And this is going to both parties. And so now it's going to Brave Davis, who courted them for their vote. And let's say y'all get tired of Brave Davis next election and y'all want to go to Pintard. Pintard is one of the puppets of Fred Smith. He worked with Fred Smith. That old Togi and Bobo thing was about them dealing with that whole Nygaard, uh, Lewis Bacon thing. And so he is one of Fred Smith's puppets. And so what do you think is going to happen? What do you think that's going to mean? Y'all better wake up. 
the same people, uh, uh, Brent Simonet and those, you know what they were doing. You know what the FNM was doing in Abaco. You know what was happening. We got to fix this country. We're going to lose it. See, the people who are selling out, they don't have to live in the same Bahamas you have to live in. There's two different worlds, you know. They don't go to the schools you go to. Just like what's happening in Haiti. They don't go to schools you go to. Uh, uh, they don't have the issues you have to. When they get sick, they go to doctor's hospital or they go away. They don't go to the same hospitals you go to. They don't have the same experience you have. They on a do not turn off list to BEC, the water and sewage. They don't have the stress that you have. They live behind the gates. Or they have their own gates. They don't have to worry about the crime that you worry about. You all better wake up before it's too late. 8035995. What's up? Call me, please. 8035995 is the number. Um, you see any questions there, Charlotte? Yeah, someone asked, where will the town hall meeting be? Um, like we said, pay attention to the um, Facebook page, the Coalition of Independence Facebook page. We will put the venue up between Monday and Wednesday. So pay attention. We'll have it circulating. Awesome. And remember, you can always find these videos, no matter what happens, on our website, coalitionofindependence.com. Coalitionofindependence.com. You can watch the live there. If for some reason the whole of social media shuts down, you can watch uh, our videos right there on our lives. And so this week, we're also going to be streaming uh, some of our documentaries. All right. We got to watch these again. We want you to pay attention to where this all started. We have not forgotten about our natural resources because that's what everyone is coming for. The Asians ain't just taking over Andres to, to, to live. They're farming in Andres. They're taking our natural resources. The Dominicans are fishing in our waters. The Chinese are taking our natural resources. They came here for our natural resources, which includes our people to make us slaves. But that will not happen on my watch. We got a new Bahamas coming, and we're going to rise. Mr. Bain, is there any truth to a Haitian village burning down today in Kamaikal? I haven't uh, been paying attention. You know, I get all these messages, but I haven't been paying attention. I'll have to check through to my information to, to really see if that happened. I, and then I'll confirm it before I speak on it. I'm going to answer the phone lines. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You are live. Hey, Lincoln. Good day, man. Good, Good day. day. Good show. Good show. Thank you, man. Um, to my Charlotte Green, to the people of Charlotte Green. And Maria, I want mm -hmm. you to know that the emails are concerned about you. I don't believe that you get better. Uh, but then again, I have a question for you. Go ahead. What do you think Michael Pendad was dealing with riding through the globe with just words? Hmm. Isn't this the same, this is this the same FDM government that supported? Extra back on the beam and people. Yep. The same F and M. You want you want think that putting the Bahamian people in more misery? Yes. They VAT, not just VAT, they did a lot of things. They they put taxes on everything. They had new taxes, yeah, they started taxing Airbnbs. They found every reason to tax us. I know, but that's just an illustration of yes. how people's mindset is. You coming around, driving around inside the grove and here, and notice that you wouldn't even bring the MP would support it, mm. would support it, um, would support it them. Um, Sean and our card, right? You wouldn't even bring him to talk to the people. See the disrespect that they have for being in people? Yeah. Why yeah. I tell you? Anyway, yeah, I'm going to answer you right now on that. Because I think... Uh, I think, thank you for your call. I think it was utterly ridiculous. Um, some people saying, oh, it was cute, it's nice. You know, um, I think it's ridiculous to think that somehow uh, the fellow who, who brother got killed or who gang member got killed by some other fellow is going to put down his gun because, hey, Michael Pintard came to the neighborhood playing some music. To show us that that is your big solution to crime shows us that we don't need to put you there because you don't really have solutions. You have gimmicks. We need real solutions. You are in the House of Assembly. You can actually table yes. bills. Yes. Every member of parliament can table bill except for a money bill. All right? And that's what the Constitution calls it, a money bill. Every member of parliament can table bills. All right? 
Michael Pinta Atkin going out in table bills. The question that all BAME people are asking, why didn't you all do this when you was in power? Why didn't you do this when you was in power? We're not interested in the gimmicks. You come in and ride into a neighborhood and play in music, you and, and the, the 10 or, or 15 people that was with you. That doesn't impress us. Lincoln, um, we are sick and tired, basically, of the mediocre governing. Okay, we are sick and tired of that. That's what Michael Pintar did. We thank him for his effort. But we have church churches that can come together, network with various organizations, and do what he did. What we need him to do is function on a national level on behalf of the entire nation, regardless of his position right now. He is in the position right now to deal with the violence going on in our country by dealing with it in the House of Assembly by presenting bills or tabling bills. It's simple. This is the level of governance we need them to operate on. Not the little small gimmicks, the niceness, things for photo ops. We are not interested in that anymore. Now, I was very displeased, very displeased, because he's in the right place right now to make changes, table some policies in reference to the situations we have going on, allow the church, allow whatever organization, whatever activists to get together, the outreach programs, they need to, to network right now to go into these communities and reach people. But we need these politicians to operate on a national level. A national level. You are sitting in the house of power. Table some bills. And enforce yeah. some stuff. And I, I will tell you exactly what I want Michael Pinta to do is to go and sit down. Because they destroyed this country over the last four years. They systematically destroyed this nation over the last four years. He was a part of that. He was in cabinet, in several cabinet positions. And they destroyed this nation. We don't want to hear anything from you. We're not interested in your poems. Uh, we're not interested in you going on the street and reciting stuff. Um, we are interested in you sitting down and shutting up. You, Dwayne Sands, Shannon Dawn, and everyone else who was a part of that regime. We need you to sit down and go away. Every time we hear you all talk, it's like opening a scab. It is like putting salt on a on a on an alcohol on a on a deep wound. Every time y'all open your mouth, sit down and shut up. Because wherever we are now, y'all cause this. The crime you see it now, y'all shut us down. Y'all broke this country down. Y'all treated behaviors like garbage. And it had a result that's happening now. You going and playing some music in a neighborhood and talking on a mic is not going to fix that. And if that's what your big solution is, then there is no hope. Michael, you are uh, played out. At the next election, you will be 62 years old. I see, you know, your, 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 your strategists have told you to wear jeans and, and don't dress in coat suit and stuff so you will look younger. To keep all of the hair off of your face and your hair so you would look younger. And people they won't remember that you will be 62 years old at the next election. Um, but you are played out. We are not interested in anyone who was born before 1967, I'm sorry, 1973 running this country. We are interested in a Bahamian who was born after independence running this nation. We have nothing against people from before, but we need people with a new mindset to run this country, not the slavery mindset, not the plantation mindset, a mindset that we can empower all Bahamians. That is what we want moving forward. Michael Pintar at the next election, you could be 62. Brave Davis could be 76. I can still be in my 40s. We need a new Bahamas. What is his name? Chester Cooper could be almost 60. We need a new Bahamas. We need a new set of people with new vision running this country. Let me take some of these questions. Can we focus on getting 1,000 payments to the People's Square to get this government 
out of office before September 1st. Good. Spread the word. Get everyone to this town meeting. Let's come there. Let's discuss. Let's organize. And let's do what we have to do. You spread the word. I just heard someone saying do radios, uh, uh, commercials, etc., etc. Listen, <coughs> we have to do this the way we have to do this. We have social media and we have word of mouth. The way Barack Obama did it. The way Trump did it. We have to use social media and the word of mouth. The media has sold their souls to the devil. And the only way we're going to get change is if we do it. This is all of our responsibility. This is not my responsibility, not uh, Maria Dacus' responsibility, not Charlotte Green's responsibility. This is all of our responsibility. If we want to bring this change, all of us have to bring this change. And that's why we always tell you, we can't do this alone. We need all of you to be a part of what we are doing. We need you to support the movement. We need you to support the movement. Go to our website and you can click on that donate button and you can assist us. This takes a lot to do what we're doing. This is an expensive venture. And just like the PLP and the FNM, all the money they've been teething for 55 years. Yes, they've been running this country for 55 years. And all of the stealing that they've been doing, they still got to raise funds. And so we have to do the same thing. So don't just tell us you support us. Show us you support us and support us. Make sure you are there and don't just come by yourself, bring someone else. Spread the word, talk, spread the message. They can shut down the media. They can buy out the media like they've been doing. But they can't stop you from talking to your friends and neighbors. They can't stop you from sharing this link with someone else. It's time to stand up, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to stand up. You just take a couple more questions and then we'll we'll be out of here. If you see any more uh, comments. Um, you see any more comments? I can only see a couple. Lincoln, are you still a part of Vision? <laughs> they talk about a singing group I was a part of. Um, <laughs> yeah, listen, uh, we're, 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 we're older now. Uh, all of us have moved on. And uh, we're not singing that way in that group anymore because we're older now. All right? That was a young group. I joined when I was 17 years old. We traveled the world. We did extremely well. Um, we were very successful at that. Um, it was one of my greatest successes that I appreciate. I got to see the whole entire world. Um, we did well. We were on the A rotation in the United States, Europe, South America. Um, uh, we were doing better than Kirk Franklin and Mary Mary at one point. And so, but a lot of famous wouldn't know that. Uh, we did extremely well. They're talking about the group I sang with and we traveled the world. So, um, that, I joined a group when I was 17. I was a teenager. And um, we did extremely well. And so now we've moved on to greater things. <laughs> Thank you so much. For Lincoln, I see, um, I see a question here from Ra Ra Ray J. Bean. Ra mm -hmm. Oh, God. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. I saw Ra I saw Raha Bain asked about transportation. Um, listen, you got to get there. You got to find a way to, by boat, plane, wheelchair, whatever. You got to find a way there. We Car, can't, pool, okay, whatever so. it takes. Yes. Good afternoon. You're live. Hey, good afternoon. I just uh, want to say and encourage everybody to come out to the meet group. Very glad you guys are having this meet group. It's been a long time coming and we need change. And I'm glad you guys, you know, uh, fighting for change. I Thank just you. want to encourage all the young people listening to this to just please come out and show your support come to the meeting so we can find out what's going on and we can show our support to these people who are trying to make a change for us thank you man our future depends on thank you man thank you god bless you man all right likewise all right thank you we appreciate that we always appreciate the, the encouragement uh this is for all bahamians this is for all of us we got to make this happen uh, no, we don't have a million, million dollar budget, but we want to bring change. The first PLP didn't have a million dollar budget, but they wanted to bring change. So they sacrificed and, and everyone put up. Grammy, when she made her money at the end of the week, she would send her money to church, to the lodge, and to the PLP to, to bring that change. That's where she prioritized. All right. And then she paid her bills and saved with the rest of it. But she made sure she wanted to bring that change. And that's what she did. It was Grammy them who made sure that happened. We got to make sure this happened. It's going to take funding to get this done. All right. Someone says website to donate. Uh, it's coalitionofindependence.com. It's coalitionofindependence.com. Um, it's coalitionofindependence.com is right there on your screen. That's where you can go to donate. 
Um, you can watch the videos there and you can also go there and donate. So the video is running on the front page of that right now. And um, uh, you can also go there and click on the donate button, scroll down, click on the donate button and you can donate. All right. So coalitionofindependence.com uh, is where you can go to donate. All right. Thank you so much uh, for believing in us. Uh, uh, but we believe in ourselves and that's why we're making this happen. This is a full-time operation for all of us. This is a full-time operation for all of us. But we, we're going to make this happen. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, like we said, the venue, the time, and the date will be uploaded to the Coalition of Independence website. Um, that would be coalitionofindependence.com, the website, as well as the Coalition of Independence Facebook page. Once again, we will be having a town hall meeting this coming Sunday at 5 p.m. The venue will be announced on the Coalition of Independence page as well as the Bahamian Evolution page. Okay, do we have anyone else who would like to call in? Any other questions that you might want to ask before we sign out? Mr. Gibson, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. Bernard Woodside says, we all have to remember no one gives up power. In most instances, you have to take it. Take it. <laughs> well, that's the only way it's going to happen. And so we got to stand up. I know there's some people who don't agree with everything that we may do or every way that we, we may do it. But our hearts are pure and we have one vision. And that is a vision where Bahamians will be first in this country, payments will own this country, and that we will run our natural resources, and we will own our natural resources. All right? So I mean, can we lock up Ryan Pindo? When we get in power, we can. He's attorney general. He determines who gets locked up, who don't get locked up. Uh, but we have to overthrow uh, this, e this evil regime of PLP and f and and we got to make a strong difference. And so there's a lot to discuss as it relates to that. All right? They're trying to get rid of the middle class across this globe. <laughs> Well, we can see a lot of things happening, but we got to stand up in our country to make sure that we go to the next level. We have one ambition, y'all. If you want to see some of our mission, go to our website. Uh, you can see it. We have, we have started to codify a lot of those things uh, so that you can see them. We don't just have them. Uh, we don't just have them uh, in, 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 what do you call it, in written form. We have it in video form and written form so that you can see uh, both of them. That you can see if you don't like to read or if you cannot read, it is right there. We are there to, 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 to support you. No matter what it is, uh, we are there to, to, to support you. You can watch the videos or you can you can um uh, you can watch the videos or you can see it. All right. I'm gonna just do a quick screen share so that you can see um exactly what we're talking about, where you can go to donate except let me just do a quick screen share. I'll uh, give you a quick little tour of the website. And so this is our website, of course. Um, and so live broadcast, it's broadcasting right there. But you can go scroll down and you can become a member here. It'll direct you to our mobile app. And starting on Tuesday, we'll be broadcasting live from our mobile app also. You can go here to pay your dues if you're a member, and you can go here to donate. All right? You can donate here. Once you click on this, it's going to redirect you, and you can click here to donate. So I'll They can also show them, show them to where they can watch the um, read up on the vision um, yeah, so and right. on the documentaries. Definitely. And so here is where you can go to donate. You just put how much ever you want to donate, and... Uh, it'll be here. And of course, we account every month for everything in and everything out to all of our members. All right. And so let me go back. And so if you want to watch the videos, you can see the documentaries here and you can see the vision here. So uh, uh, we're going to be live broadcasting the documentaries where we're going to be talking through some of them. And I think I will start on that on Tuesday. We're going to start from the first documentary. We're going to talk our way through it, remind you of what happened, remind you of what's going on. We're going to have a little sit down and talk about it, all right, about what about what really went on. And so we're going to be playing the documentary live, um, and we're going to be uh, uh, 
during the documentaries, we're going to be pausing, talking, and discussing it while it's going on. We're going to have a discussion about what happened with our aragonite, what happened with our oil, what happened with our land. We need to have these discussions, and we want to make sure you're equipped so that when you talk to your friends and family. So here, if you go to the vision, you will see uh, education, tourism, uh, energy reform, uh, COVID response, and good governance. And then there's some more that we're going to put up that we did. Uh, we didn't put them up yet, but you're going to see the vision right here. So if you click on the vision, we have a lot of stuff right here. You can see what you can watch now. You can see what's coming soon. So we're going to put all of them on there. And so, for example, our vision for education was mind blowing. So was tourism and energy. And so you can watch any of these. Uh, the teachers union and many others, teachers, professionals were very impressed. We had some uh, technical internet issues because of where we were broadcasting from while we were doing it but uh you get the point but we also put it down we have all of everything uh lined up properly we're not just talking this we've done proper research from around the world we have professionals uh professionals who, who help put this together all right and professionals who pre presented these and so we have vision for junior high elementary uh we have a, a, a proper vision that you can go here and see we're not just talking this. Like I said, everything has been codified. And you can also see this whole thing. Uh, you can see the whole thing um, in video format. Also, uh, to vision for tourism was like none other that we've ever seen in this country. We are very proud of the print that we put together to show this to you. Uh, you can Again, you can go here, uh, click on it, and you'll be able to see uh, the vision. And you'll also be able to see it in document form. And you can also download it. All right. You can download it as a PDF. But, you know, vision for the beach vendors, you know, making tourism a business. Tourism, we will not uh, no longer uh, be an advertising agency in the Ministry of Tourism. All right. We're going to form a tourism corp. All right. That's going to own. Uh, we're going to invest in Bahamians, partnership with grants up to $5 million. We're showing how we're getting some five uh, the sovereign wealth fund. We're showing where the money is coming from. We're showing the mainstream, premium, and luxury uh, targets that we're gonna gonna be involved in. All right, we're now gonna be in the tourism business as a people. We're gonna invest in in, in Bahamians, boutique hotels, cruise ships. We're gonna invest in the cruise line. If you could spend three hundred million dollars on a defense force boat, you could spend three hundred million dollars on a cruise ship that's gonna bring extra money in. All right, that you can use to then buy. A defense or boat all right um so everything is here all the research is there so i'm gonna ask you to um to to please go there uh see everything uh look it up we did good research everything is there um wanted to show you some more but um i think we run out of time all right so uh, i think that's it uh for today we want to thank all of you for tuning in uh, remember, listen, show us your support. We can't do this alone. There's no way that we can do this alone. We're not going to pretend that we can do this alone. And the only thing we're asking for is for you to help us get this done. We're going to take the bullets. We're going to take the sacrifices. Us, they're going to come after. Is us, they're going to gonna, gonna, gonna lie on and tell stories about and, and attack and destroy our businesses. You know, uh, is us that's going to have to go through that. Is us who are going to try to, to, to get a job and, and can't get it. We're going to take the sacrifice for you. All we ask you to do is stand with us and support us. That's it. And we're going to have this change. Spread the word. Don't talk about these other stuff and don't let them change the conversation. Spread the word. All of a sudden, since we exposed what happened with the, with the Brave Davis trip to L.A., uh, you see where they came in the news and started saying, oh, we're going to get serious on immigration. Come on. Come on. We have been controlling and we have been are uh, leading this government for the last two years. Everything they have done has been towards responding to us. And they're doing it again. All right? We are in full control of this, uh, what's happening in our country, because they're responding to us. But what they're doing is stealing our ideas and trying to water it down so you don't really get nothing. The carbon credit thing, they're trying to water it down so you get nothing. We're going to break this down. And so on, starting on Tuesday, we may start with Vision 2025. Or should we start with the documentaries? I think we should start with Vision 2025. Okay, let's do that. And so on Sunday, we'll start on Vision 2025. You're going to see it 
uh, at advertisement for it by tomorrow. You'll see it on all our Facebook pages, but it's going to be Vision 2025 audit documentaries. And we're going to go through this and we're going to start to show you some of what it is that we plan to do and what can happen. And the government wants to steal it, so be it. Take it. It's going to benefit the Bahamian people. But don't water it down and dilute it so that the Bahamian people don't really benefit. Because then we're going to have to fight you. Bahamas, we got one country. We want to see you on Tuesday, but we really want to see you next week, Sunday at 2 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an amazing and awesome pleasure being here with you. And all we ask you to do is continue to support the Coalition of Independence as we stand up and support you. Thank you for joining us. On behalf of me and our illustrious chairman, see you on Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. See you next time. Changes. Change ain't coming. Changes here. <laughs>